Hello guys and gals, and we are back with another book review. This time we'll be reviewing um, Daniel X, book six, and it's entitled, um, or it's titled, rather, Lights Out, which is basically apt, considering it is the sixth and final book in the Daniel X series. I'm not sure what you would call a series of six books, because I know it goes like, I don't know what one is, but two is like, um, I, I mean, a sequel, then threequel or um, trilogy. Uh, fourth is probably has something to do with quad. I don't know. But most books are five books long. In the case of Wings of Fire, then there are three arcs of five books each. In the case of um, the Percy Jackson series, um, they are five books each, except for, I want to say, except for the Norse series and the Egyptian series. But um, I don't remember. I'm pretty sure that the Egyptian series was three and the Norse series, I think, was three as well. But I don't remember. Don't quote me on that. Um, all the others, um, the Lightning Thief and all those with the Olympic the, the, with the Olympian gods was um, five. The one with the Roman gods was five. The one with the trials of Apollo, that one was five as well. Um, so yeah. But anyways, um, so it's kind of strange, but not unwelcome to see um, a book go into six, a series go into six books. That's what I meant to say. Um, this book basically picks up right where book five left off. So if you are going to read the, the series, you can read them in basically any order because they do a very good job of explaining the concept. Um, you could start with book four if you wanted to, or book three, or even read the manga first. Um, and I think you'd be just fine, but it's kind of important that you read book six after you read book five or that you save book five for last. Well, book five, then book six, because book six does put a capstone on or a big cap at, to the end of the, to the end of the, um, the franchise. Um, and it's really very, it's really written in a very interesting way. Um, and it's not really a spoiler either. Um, because if you read book five, then there's like an excerpt at the end that, I think, did I dream that? I might dream that. I don't know. Um, sometimes they have like an excerpt from the next book in the previous book, you know, to, you know, hype it up and say, oh, well, hey, coming soon, it, here's an excerpt from the next book so you can get excited. Um, book six took an interesting turn. Um, and um, it was a good turn, I guess, but it was just very interesting. Um, the book tackles the issue or the concept or the idea. What if, what if everything was in Daniel X's mind? It was kind of like, um, cause Daniel X has fanciful powers. I mean, he can basically heal from any wound he has. He can summon, you know, he can summon items out of nowhere he can summon his friends, you know, out of his imagination and his family as well. Well, not so much now because what happened in book five, but I'm not going to go into that. But um, it's all very well and good because up to this point, the book has been kind of written from the perspective that Daniel has these powers. But in the sixth book, he gets hit by a semi truck it picks up basically where book five left off with him walking beside this road in Kentucky. And, um, so he literally gets hit by a semi truck and, um, he thought he could, you know, get away from it, you know, by using his powers, but his powers didn't work. So the book starts out with him waking up in the hospital and, um, they're all treating, everybody's treating him like a normal kid. So it's like, oh, well, hey, where's Daniel X's powers? I mean, and he's going on about his fanciful adventures, you know, in the pre the previous five books. 
which is really kind of interesting because um, in book five, we find out a lot about number one and why number one on the list is number one on the list. And there's a lot of shocking secrets there that I don't really want to get into. Um, but I will say that number one, basically, and basically you saw this coming if you realize that number two on the list was basically the devil. So if number two is the devil, then who's more powerful than the devil than basically a god of chaos? And um, so basically number one, has seemingly limitless power. So that's all well and good. Basically, the book tries to convince you that the previous five books were fictional. And in our world, the books are fictional because as far as we know, there aren't aliens going around fighting off bad guys. So this was written from an ingenious perspective. And it all basically pivots around the fact that the event that basically shattered Daniel's life basically becomes the focal point of this book as well. Um, I felt the book was very well written. It seemed like a fitting way to end the in the franchise. Granted, they wouldn't have to end the franchise, but it seems like they ended the franchise basically as well as they could. Um, as I pointed out in the last review, um, I want to check this just to make sure. This book was written a couple years after the previous one, after book five. And um, so I think, well, I'm going to just check real quick. Give me just a second here. 2015. Okay. And um, I don't remember when book, f I think that 2010 was when book five was written. But I'm not sure. Maybe it was more like 2013 or 2012, but it seems like this book was written a couple years after book five came out. But then again, it was written by the same person that wrote book five. So all the connections are there. Um, what I felt, well, I kind of felt that um, near the end of this book, it got to the point where it was really a lot like, um, I want to say the Chronicles of Narnia, The Last Battle. And if you've read that book, then you'll know what I mean. Um, because there is like a huge showdown I will, that's not really spoiling anything either because you'd expect a huge showdown between, you know, number one and Daniel X. And I, and that's a good thing because, um, wow. I just realizing that, um, I think that I don't remember exactly how many Chronicles of Narnia books were there. There are, but, book six or I don't know if it was book six or not, but the last battle is the final book of that series. I'm starting to realize exactly kind of how that book messed me up. <laughs> and I mean that kind of in a good way because a lot of emphasis would put, was put on certain characters and then, well, then some, then bad things happened, stuff like that. But, um, this was a very interesting book. Now, granted, I will say that book five is my favorite of the entire franchise, but that's not to discount any of the other books in this franchise. This is a franchise. The Daniel X franchise is a franchise that I, I feel everyone should read, even if they're an adult. I mean, I'm 47 and I love the series. Um, I think I'm 47. Let me see. This is, 20, this is 2024, and I was born in 1977, so that was 47 years ago. Well, 48 next year in March. And I enjoyed this series a lot. That's why 
the first book basically put this put this franchise in the top five. But it was the fifth book of the series that basically put it in my, in my top three, basically because it's amazing. So it's, it's hard to compete with that. Um, this book took a slightly different approach than any of the other books in the series, which is commendable. And again, it was written a couple years after the fifth book came out. So, um, but yeah, but since it was written by, um, sorry, I should say, and I've, Totally forgot to mention this. This was a book. Um, Daniel X is a book by, as you can see, James Patterson and Chris Grabenstein. And um, so, yeah, they both b wrote the previous book. So it smooths like it, it flows like butter. I mean, it's smooth like butter. It flows like the ocean or sm or sm smooth waters. OK, it's way too late at night for me to be making this video, but it needs to be made. Um, and I really admire that this is a franchise that basically can take and can basically change, um, it can basically change the, um, writing style to a certain extent and still be completely cohesive and, um, make it like nothing ever happened. Um, but the fifth book basically took more of a horror aspect because I believe Chris Grabenstein from my research does, um, a lot of, um, children's, um, horror books akin to like goosebumps and stuff like that. Even though I know that was written by, um, RL Stein, I believe. Wait, is Chris Grabenstein actually RL Stein? I'm probably not. Anyways. Um, but anyways, and I like that. Um, I think the first four books were kind of more jokey and um, a little bit more humorous. Not to say that the last two books were less humorous. There was still plenty of humor in them, but um, it, they took more of a realistic um, tone. And, um, but yeah, if you're looking for something to read, then I highly, 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 highly recommend the Daniel X franchise. Um, and you can read the books in any order, like I say, except for five and six need to be read, you know, after one after another. Five you should read before six because five, six continues where five left off, basically. And um, what I'd like to see more than anything, if anyone is listening, or if anyone cares. Um, I've said this ever since I read the first book. I've always said that this needs to be a TV show, a movie. It needs some hype. It needs some press because um, I think that the themes in the franchise are relevant today still, even though it was written back in, I want to say uh, 2008, 2010, something like that. It was written a while back, but I think that the ideals and the concepts are still very valid. If anything, they're more valid today than they were even back then um from my research i have seen that um attempts were made to basically make this into a movie i think it was or something but it's it was, it's been called caught in like developmental problem uh, development issue having development issues um maybe i don't know you know how th how when you're trying to make a movie and then there's like too many too many cooks spoil the broth or something like that. Too many cooks in the kitchen, you know, maybe too many ideas hitting the fan at once. And, um, th there was no resolution. I'm wondering who currently holds the rights to this because it would be nice to actually see this, see the light of day on the big screen or even the small screen. I mean, even like a Netflix series or something like that, because I've seen, I haven't actually seen, the um, Percy Jackson series that the TV show that they made on like Disney plus or something because it's Disney plus and I don't use streaming services. But um, from what I hear um, that franchise is doing very, very well on the small screen, even if Disney is, you know, in control of it, but it'd be cool to have Netflix or, you know, some service, make a movie or a book 
not book. Sorry, it, it's already a book. Uh, make a movie or a mo- TV show based off of um, Daniel X because um, it's just amazing. And yes, that is an opinion, and I'll stand by it. Um, it would just be amazing to see this get out of whatever development issues it's having and to see the light of day, whatever they've got already made. Um, I'm not sure, exactly sure what happened. I didn't really research this very thoroughly or maybe I did way back when, after I like started reading the franchise and I might not remember now exactly why it isn't a TV show or movie yet, but, um, it, it needs to be because, um, I think it would be really popular and everybody loves money apparently. And, you know, it could basically be a franchise that would rival some of the franchises today, but that's just my opinion. And, um, so yeah, it would be just nice to, um, see it thrive in more forms than just a paperback or hardback. But yeah, um, the next book review I want to do is going to be basically I'll review the entire franchise, all six books. There will be spoilers because I do want to talk about a lot of the finer points of the franchise. And, um, so yeah, that one's going to be fun. Um, this has been a wonderful series to read. Um, considering that I, this was a series I found quite by accident, but I'm learning that there are no accidents in life. Um, there are no coincidences. Everything happens for a reason. And maybe I was meant to find this franchise because it's a franchise that I, I was like, well, Hey, this looks like a fun franchise to read. And so I'm like, okay, wow. This was really, 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 really a fun, a fun franchise to read. It was very well written and um, a lot of really great work went into this. But anyways, yeah, long story short, TLDR, too long, didn't read. Um, Fast forward to the end of the video. Um, This book, along with every other, oops, sorry, every other. It's a work. Okay. This book, along with every other book in this franchise, including the manga, um, the the graphic novel for the North Americans, um, all the Daniel X things I've read have been awesome and very well written. And I'm not surprised because it is James Patterson. And so, of course, the books are going to be good. Um, there's several other franchises that I, that I want to start. Um, I found, um, well, I'm currently working through book 10 of the Wings of Fire series. Um, there's two more Barnaby Grimes books I want to read. There's, um, let me see, I about my bag here. Um, I always keep with me a copy of Walter Dean Meyer's Shadow of the Red Moon. Um, just, to, just yesterday I found a series called Battle Dragons City of Thieves by Alex London, which I want to read. I'm sure I could probably get more books from the Battle Dragons series through the library, along with the Barnaby Grimes book, The Edge Chronicles. Um, but yeah, I've been doing a lot of reading, which um, I think is better for me than watching YouTube all the time. And I found a lot of great books in the process. Also, um, Impossible Creatures by Catherine Rundell, I believe. It looks, it also looks promising. But I do want to read all the way through the Wings of Fire, at least the first, the the the, the arc of fifteen. The, the fifteen books, three books, three, three arcs of five books. And then I might go back to Barnaby Grimes, read those two books. Then um, 
maybe because Shadow of the Red Moon looks to be a very short book. Well, it's a couple hundred pages probably. Uh, under 200 pages. So there's still lots of books that I want to read. But anyways, yeah. Long story short, if you're bored and you want to read something and you and you like sci-fi, you have to kind of like sci-fi in order to um, grasp the concepts of this book. Um, but even if you don't like sci-fi, give the book a try anyways. Um, if I were you, I would start with book one because it... Um, because basically it sets everything off. But like I say, the books can be read in any, in, in, in any sequence. Um, but yeah. Like book two, to, two basically explains the same concepts as book one. So you could start from that point. Book three could be read before book one or two and you'd still know what was going on. Same with book four. Same with book five. But, um, and I like that about, about series is that they're um, linear, I guess, but not quite non, but kind of non-linear also. Even though they kind of happen in a sequence, but you can pick up from any time and know what's going on. Um, but yeah, this has been um, a book review of um, Daniel X Lights Out. Book six of the Daniel X franchise. Sixth and final, as far as I know which is kind of sad because it was a very, very good series. But anyways, that is um, going to do our first video. If you like this content, make sure you like and subscribe, ring the bell so you know I upload. Also, if you want to support me in any way or if you want to join the Discord server, all the information will be in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching, everyone. You are loved and have a great day.